We move away from Chengdu where OMG's arena is over to the home arena of Team WE. And although they don't have a chance to make it into playoffs anymore, they still have a few more matches to play in the LPL and potentially to play Blue Shell or spoilers to some of these teams that are trying to fight for a chance to get into the LPL playoffs. One of the teams that is looking to try and make it into fourth or third place would be FPX. Looking to try and pick up a few more points, secure their spot in playoffs for the summer split, and make up for the lackluster performance that they had during spring split. They've made some changes to their roster coming to summer. We haven't seen too much from it, but hopefully it's going to be enough. Whereas the WE has been a bitter tale in the LPL, because they went from the World Championship semi-finalists last year during the 2017 World Championship all the way now to unfortunately not going to be able to qualify for playoffs. Joining me for the second set of today is going to be Clement Chu and that has just been such a sad run for Team WE. Yeah, we did right there see the signs, the players saying, I didn't get to see your first game in Xi'an, but I will stay here for the last. And that's kind of the mentality that we're getting there. They started with high hopes. They thought they could bring everything together. Condi was back on the roster, yep. but it was simply not to be. And now there is no chance for W to go to Worlds. No, there is no chance. They've been experimenting with the roster so frequently in the summer split. I mean, we saw all the players that left kind of come back and started playing a bit more. But... With new additions and with all the changes from spring to summer, nothing has been really working for WE. Yep, we haven't seen the original roster of Condi, Ben, Mystic, Shiye, and 957 the entire split long. We were hoping that with Ben coming back in, maybe Condi would join at the same time, but they're going to go and take a piece of FPX to start with, actually. The former jungler coming in from FPX, Pepper, is mm -hmm. now the mainstay and starting jungler for uh, WE, so... Definitely big grudge match in that position. Yeah, might be regretting his decision a little bit because <laughs> FPX have been on the up and up and they brought in Cool as their mid laner of choice. He brought a lot of veteranship, a lot of shot calling and leadership to the squad when he joined FPX last split. And then he really had to, he, really, he had the off season, so to speak, during MSI, during Rift Rivals to work with the team. And we know that it really helped with the communication, but FPX has starting to change their style quite heavily, especially towards the end of summer split. Yeah, FPX recently have been on a four game winning split and they really reshaped the style that they play in. I like to call their style right now, never a step backwards. If there's a team fight happening on the Rift, most more than likely it is FPX starting the fight themselves. They have the second highest team fight initiation rate when it comes to that sense. And it's just throwing out a lot of the difficult execution in their team fight styles. They used to play poke, they used to play, play protect LWX and bank on him as a sole carry, but all of that is now out of the window. They're playing multiple damage dealers and they're playing compositions that just fight front to back and never go backwards. And hopefully that's gonna work out for FPX because their previous play style was a bit wishy-washy. It, was. Um, it, it relied a lot on Cool trying to pull the team together, you know, telling them they need to either speed things up or slow things down when they went into their matches. Now with this new playstyle, it seems like they're meshing a bit better together, and I just hope that it's not too little too late for FPX, because the split's almost done. Yeah, that's a big thing about FPX. If you have to look at their season overall, they have been a little bit of a disappointment, but let's look at the play that they've recently come up with. If you realize and take a look at the composition, it's always about going forward. There is no kiting involved. There's no banking on LWX to save your composition as a whole. They have multiple damage sources, and they just chase people down relentlessly. Which is great for LWX. No longer is he unleashed no longer is he being controlled by fpx but i said this time everyone is matching his play style so they're going to his tempo and his aggression which means he doesn't have to sit back and you know be controlled anymore that's the great thing about i think a good coach in a team is that you play towards your player tendencies sometimes it's about covering up the weaknesses that you have from individual players and cooking a cohesive team composition out of it. LWX, he has been known for playing those hyper carries, but he's also very prone to giving up his life in those big time team fight scenarios. So I don't think you can bank as on him as a sole carry, and that is something that FBX was trying to do with their Oriana comps, with their Lulu compositions. All of that is out of the window, and they're just trying to go all in. Which should be a good play style for FPX going up against Team WE, because this is a much slower team. This is a team that plays towards the late game, and yes, they have made changes and adapted to the early pace meta, but they still have the playstyle and identity of being a bit slower. 
Yeah, they definitely are waiting for Mystic to really uh, grow up, not not really grow up, but scale up into the later parts of the game. Their big 380 carries, Zaya, the Ezreal, and also the Kai'Sa are very slow in lane, and a lot of times they show their hand early. So the enemy team will know what they're going up against. You're waiting for the 35, the 30 minute big 5v5 team fight. That's WE style. They've never really changed. And that has been a big weakness for them this split. Which we thought would change with all the you know, changes in the roster that be taking place. Spring split, it was just a complete meltdown for Team WE. They were constantly changing their play style, constantly changing their players, bringing in new players. Imp joined the roster early in summer split as well. We thought he'd be a starting member, played a few games, took a step back. Now it's why Ford is actually playing for Team WE. And even though they have really strong names, these are players that have all played, or most of them have played in the World Championship. These are all players that have gone international. These are all top in the LPL caliber hasn't worked for WE. It just seems like there is some form of disconnect in the team itself. Yeah, I think the main issues they had earlier in the split was about their team fight success rate. That was a stat that I dug up when I was looking at EDG's uh, team fight success rate as well. And WE are ranked 13th in the league. If there's a big 5v5 team fight, their win rate was around 35%. So it wasn't enough to cut it. And to be honest, I felt a lot of that decision-making problems were coming from Condi. Condi was the one being caught out a lot of times in these team fights, and you can see that W are now moving towards Pepper, who's someone who has shown a lot of good early aggression as their mainstay in the jungle. Pepper's been playing for Team WE again. We it feels like he's gotten the short stick of things after moving away from FPX, uh, which is quite sad because FPX's current playstyle is what Pepper was really good at when he joined FPX. Definitely. He started on FPX as a very aggressive early game jungler. They made sure that he became a little bit more controlled, became more of a late game tempo based jungler instead, which we thought was great because moving to WE, that's the type of jungler they're looking for that matches their playstyle a bit better. Now FPX is going back to his early game aggression. They're going back into the all in and Pepper's just sitting there saying, well, now I'm on a team that doesn't make it to playoffs. Uh, now I'm playing a different <laughs> playstyle. Now my old team is playing my playstyle. He's probably getting paid well. So, you know, not all is lost, but I have to say, unfortunately for FBX, this has been a bit of a disappointing split for them as well. They lost their coach and they lost Pepper. They had a near 60% win rate with Cool in the later half of the split, but they have not lived up to those expectations. TLP has been the one to take over their spot in the Western Conference. When FBX joined its spring split, or when they were playing in Spring Split, I should say, uh, Frostgrim was saying that the expectations we had for FPX were the expectations we now have for Rogue Warriors. It was flipped. Yeah. We didn't expect much from Rogue Warriors. We thought they were a bag of misfits. Whereas for FPX, we thought this new, hungry, aggressive team would work well together to try and take it as far as what Rogue Warriors have done. Completely flipped. Now the expectations for Rogue Warriors are high, but not so much for Fun Plus Phoenix anymore. The Fump of Phoenix, I just feel like they have so many contradictions relying on their own team. If you look throughout the roster, there's not one player that can give you a clear-cut win condition. I think that's the main problem with them, but first, let's go into the rosters. It's up against WE with 957, Pepper in the jungle, CA, as well as Mystic and Ben. Again, they're going to start with Pepper, who they did take from FPX, and we're seeing Mystic and Ben, the World uh, Championship duo, getting back together. Game Guru and Alex Cool, as well as LRX and Chris, will be starting for FBX. Alex a little bit invisible there. Yeah. It's Cloak of invisibility, a... stolen from Harry Potter. Superpower confirmed right here. Maybe he's going to play Evelyn today. Same, potentially. But as I was talking about... There he is, we found him! <laughs> Hello! There he is indeed. Alex? Moving over from the LMS, Alex was a strong jungler there. Um, now trying to work with FPX. I'm super surprised that Alex managed to fit so well. Uh, he wasn't a starting jungler in the LMS, but in the later half of the split, FPX had been going to solely Alex. Uh, they did start with another jungler, Xing Yi, but in the past 23 games, it has only been Alex. And I really feel that his synergy, his early game aggression with Cool was the deciding factor in that decision. So it's also someone's 18th birthday, apparently. Couldn't see who it was. I saw the words cool, but I don't think it's cool's 18th birthday by any chance. I doubt it. <laughs> He's been playing for a long time. Uh, it's uh, interesting to talk about cool's history. He was actually known as an Ari player all the way back. Still his third most placed champion hey, in his career. Now. 
you can play the bot lane though. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what they say about Orianna and Swain. They still play mid lane. That is true. That is true. Talking about cool, you never really know what he's gonna pull out. He's played 17, oh, actually 18 champions so far. If you also put into his bot lane appearances, actually the highest amount of champions played along with uh, plenty. Yeah, along with SMLZ. So. The thing about FBX and about the wishy-washy style we were talking about is that as a team, they've played 58 champions overall. That's one of the highest in the LPL. And to be honest, I do have to question if they're actually very familiar with all, a lot of those compositions. They've been trying a ton of stuff, and I really think that down the stretch, going into the most crucial moments of the split where they have to decide their playoffs, going back to something that's very easy to execute, doesn't require a lot of shot calling from them, is a good move. Remember, FBX... They're a team of above average players. There's not a single position on that team you say, okay, that's actually on the lower end of the things. So if they can just have something that's easy to execute, they put all of their individual talent in the forefront, they should have a good time into the playoffs. Which makes sense with how they are currently playing at the LPL. They are making it so that they're very aggressive playing towards their strengths and not tapering their gameplay or changing things up as to what the meta decides it is or what they're playing against decides it is, just playing what they're good at which is being aggressive and having these early game champions just going in one direction, which is forward. So if FPX can keep this up, not only are their chances for going into playoffs quite high, their chances in playoffs get a lot better as well. Definitely. It's a, it's a tough playoff landscape. If they do make it in fourth place, they will be looking to potentially RNG or JD gaming. Neither of those are going to be easy opponents. And to be honest, they don't have the best of chances. Sure. But it would still be quite refreshing to see this team actually take the next step and fulfill their expectations coming into this split. But especially with RNG's current form, if you find aggression against them that early into the match, and if FPX play their playstyle against RNG, that could cause an upset. The MSI champions could be eliminated as early as the first round of playoffs. Yep, we do have to remember, FBX were really the first ones to welcome Uzi back into the LPL. Oh Took boy. down that series in... Uh, Quite a stop, to be honest. Which is why it just feels like that playstyle would work so well against some of the bigger teams in the LPL, especially with the form of RNG at the moment, with EDG falling back as well for the past six or so weeks, and even the likes of JD, who looked very strong, but now are starting to drop games again. FPS could be on the up and up. They've had an up and down year so far. Again, we had high expectations for them. We tapered the expectations during Spring Split. Cool joined the roster. We thought that was going to be a big upgrade. He's had an entire MSI to work with them. Moving into Summer Split, he's worked with the team as well. Does provide the leadership and the voice for the squad. Now just the bits and pieces of the puzzle need to come together for FPX to make the late playoff run for WE. Fortunately, not the case anymore. They can't make it for that late run. Yep. So, FBX, unfortunately, they took an entire split, but really haven't solidified a win condition for themselves. In terms of late game team fights, they're not exactly uh, dominant in that situation either. And in terms of the split push with Gimgoon, it hasn't really worked out. So, this late into the split, they finally lash onto an identity. I want to see how far they can actually take this all in type of style. We've seen what WE do there with their style. Late game, has to be working out. This entire split has been all about the early game. It's all been about the fights that take place as soon as possible on the map. Let's see if they have some changes going into their match against FPX. They're out of the competition. They're still gonna try and give it their all and look at this. Oh. Aatrox left open during the first draft phase. So Camille, Kaiser, Tom Ketch, banned up by WE, FPX, Rakan, LeBlanc, and Ezreal. And Aatrox left up, FPX give it away. Yeah, this is a very interesting, and we have to remember that this Aatrox could still be a flex pick as well. Xie, I would not rule it out for him to take a stab at this champion. On the other hand, for 957, he's actually been playing mostly tanks. It's going to be the Shed, Nar, and Cho'Gath blind pick for him. So WE, they're taking this opportunity. It's very rare that we see the Aatrox being let out, even after the nerfs. FPX is sadly going to go with Talia, as well as Alistar, as their two first picks of choice. The number one goal when you play against WE is to shut down their bot lane, and they have selected really good tools for that. They've taken away the safest AD carry that we talked about in Ezreal, and they have the 
Talia and Alistar to make very easy pre-6 ganks into the bot lane. And this is going to be a shocker for Mystic if he actually locks this in. Well, he has. Varus gets locked in for Team WE. Very strong meta pick at the moment, commonly banned on the blue side. But, but he does pick it up. Champion. It's not Mystic's type of champion, but yeah. he is going to be playing it today. Wow, that's a huge turnaround. We saw in the set versus EDG, where EDG were not banning the Varus, they took Tom Kench, and they knew because Mystic wouldn't take it, they would have the best dual bot lane in the meta currently, in that Varus and Tom Kench, and we're seeing Mystic catching up to the meta a little bit. No, understanding that he has to take this champion. Varus is incredibly safe in lane as well, if you want it to be. I mean, let's be real. If you're a pro player at this level of gameplay, there are just certain champions you need to be able to play in your respective position. From time to time, apparently Varus is going to be one of them. FPX will lock in Zoe as their final pick in the first draft phase. I Means Salia should be going into the AD carry. So in the bottom lane or in the jungle position, unless LWX decides going to pick up Zoe, which is highly unlikely. We do see Alex really likes his Talia as one of the few players in the LPL to consistently first pick Talia. And we see that what he does with it is constantly roaming into the bot lane where it's very easy for the flip back to kill a lot of the current meta AD carries. Things like Kai'Sa, things like Varus, they don't have the easiest time evading it. I mean, for Alex, he's got Crisp on Alistar. Crisp was actually one of the players of the Rift this week, one of the best five from last week. Strong performances in the bottom lane for him, tying up with LWX, so Alistar to help out with the lockdown. You've got a Zoe as well in the mid lane, so Alex will have a field day with his ganks. They ban out Yasuo as well as Nocturne. WE respond with two AD carry bans, Tristana as well as Jin being taken away. Kaisa was one of their earlier bans, so plenty of AD carries off the table. And you can see what W are doing with the bans. They're trying to protect their bot lane as much as possible. Jin and Tristana have a lot of early game CC to swing the lane into FBX's favor. And W realized that most of their damage, 36% of their damage, is coming in from Mystic. So he has to have a good laning phase. Let's see how he does against LWX's Kog'Maw, though. What? Um, <laughs> we haven't seen that pick a lot. <laughs> Uzi picked it up last week for RNG. Didn't have a good game with the champion. Now LWX is going to get his chance to see what he is. To show WWE what he is made of. WWE are going to be forced to show what they'll find a few picks are going to be. Sia should be picking up the Aatrox with Na being locked in for 957. One of his signature and comfort picks. Unless Aatrox is flexing into the jungle, we should see who the jungle pick for Pepper will be. It does look like they need a bit of semi frontline, but they're also thinking about the potential counter against uh, Talia. So I really like this Xin Zhao pick here. The sudden uh, the charge onto Talia makes her W very hard to land, and it is considered a strong early game counter. We even saw it in the last series where Clearlock picked it up. Was it into Talia in the jungle? Was it into a Talia flex pick who eventually went into the mid lane? But very strong in the early two on twos. Honestly, put up a lot of pressure into the mid lane. Pepper will get his chance to work with the champion. It's Aatrox against Zoe in that mid lane. The final pick for FPX was Gangplank in the top lane, going up against 957's Nah, one of his signature picks. I have to say, overall, I really do favor WE's draft. This is one of the few series where I feel like W has gotten the better side. They do have a stronger bot lane 3v3, and their mid and jungle synergy should be better as well. So they do have a lot of strong early game options to go into. And in the LPL, Vars is considered one of the hardest counters to Kog'Maw. An absolutely horrible win rate for Kog'Maw because at level 6, Varus has a very easy time shutting you down, and he can harass you throughout the entirety of laning phase as well. What gives him the ability to do that? Shut him down as well as the harass, that is. Well, the level 6 uh, ultimate is very hard to dodge from uh, Kog'Maw. It's basically always up. You're always in range for that uh, that lockdown. And pre-6, the harassment also goes into Varus' way. The piercing arrow, the, uh, the, uh, the blight as well. Forces Kog'Maw to step away from the minions at times. We saw that against RNG as well. The Varus that was run into them. Went lethality and also picked up Arcane Comet. Yep. So very common with the current meta, um, but was just atrocious to watch in the bottom lane. There is an Alistar to help out with disengage protection, a little bit of healing. It's not going to 
help out too much for LWX. So, uh, W actually getting a lot out of those final bands. I felt like the two bands of Tristana and Jin really suited their what their composition wanted, what their team wanted, and keeping Mystic float afloat, having him a good lane. And for uh, for FPX, I feel like their composition moves later. They actually now need to wait for the level six to convincingly shut down the bot bottom side. But they've got a lot of scaling. Zoe, Kogmo, as well as Gangplank on their roster. WE, lots of early game fighting potential and that strong pick of Aatrox that we very rarely see. Let's see how it works out as we go into the rift for match one. WE taking on FPX. Okay. What was that? The taunt's coming out already from Zoe. You can see even with WE being knocked out of playoff contention, even with FBS traveling all the way, still got lots of chance to try and make it into playoffs themselves. The WE fans are there in large numbers to support WE in their match today. They do have one of the largest arenas. Yes, they do. Is it the largest arena? I believe so. You can fit a thousand people in it. It is a national theater. Just checking up on the runes. What's interesting for me is that Mystic chose to go for the lethal temple yeah. instead of Comet to punish lane even harder, which does fit WE. They are looking for the late game team fights at the end. That is their identity. So maybe wanting to go for an on hit build for that. It's not bad for Mystic. Comet does help with the poke a little bit, but adds an extra, what, two, three hundred damage over time in the early laning phase. You should still be able to get the exact same poke down. There's nothing much that Elderbex and Chris can do in response. Yeah, should be trying to bully out starting from the level one. Both bottom lanes did leash for their junglers. So they should be left to their own devices for now. Early fight though, Chris. Ooh, Mystic decides not to lock him down with the stun from Brom's passive. That's yeah, pretty rare to see uh, the Alistar actually walk up and go into that trade level one. Typically not the best trade window for the Alistar. Still decided to just to try and knock back uh, Mystic. Ben nor Mystic decided to punish that, which was fairly curious to me. We get to check in with the junglers though. Alex went from his blue buff, cleared out the wolf camp, then red buff straight away. So ticks over level 3 from that. Anyways, for the side of WE, Pepper went his red buff to blue now. Scuttle crab over towards Gromp. And Bottom lane's really been the focus though. Yeah. You can really see the priority between the jungle matchups. Uh, Talia is not venturing into river whatsoever. This is a matchup if the Xin Zhao catches you and is able to dodge your W, you're actually just dead. So playing very, very passive in terms of the top side, and that does give this window. There's Xin Zhao. Tags is cool. Forces cool to flash very early into that engage. That's what we expect from Xin Zhao. You're going to see the early aggression coming out from the jungle. A lot of it focused around the mid lane, and Cool's already a summoner spell down against Aatrox of all champions. Uh, good wave control from uh, Xi Ye. Aatrox actually has a very easy time of pushing the wave out. Uh, decided to have it come in and take that summoner advantage over Cool. And this is what we were talking about for WWE. WWE usually fall behind in the early game, but with this bot lane, with this jungle mid duo, it's not really going to happen. Okay. Even right there, Chris jumps in for a combo. Ben steps in front to protect all the damage that would come back out. Mystic turns around with the trade and it's easily pushed in for this bottom lane. So WWE's bottom lane going to be fairly strong to start this match, so good size, uh, good signs for them going into game one. Varus does work very well with the lethal temple in terms of trades. You slow people down with your E, and that 1.5 second runs down. But Pepper is going to find Ooh. Alex here. Alex going to be able to get the jump first. Doesn't get the flick back and hits him with a couple of rocks, but Pepper's okay. They're looking for a dive. If Alex wasn't there, they probably could have gone for it, but with Alex being close by, a little bit too difficult for WE to execute. Now that was actually a very risky scenario right there because if uh, Alex actually just walked out a second earlier, he would have ran face first into a level 4 Xin Zhao, and that would have most likely forced the flash. I mean, you could see Chris as well as LOBX try to collapse there, but Xin Zhao is just very strong in the early game. We're still seeing these trades come out from LOBX as well as Chris, but Mystic knows he can be this aggressive because of all the utility and support Ben provides. 
LWX is packing teleport as well. He knows that he needs to get back into these lanes after WE push him in aggressive, especially early into the match. Already a 10 CS lead. Picked up for Mystic. Cool, making his way towards top side of the map. He's on Zoe, has Protobelt for himself. The classical double, uh, the second cannon wave roam coming out from Cool. Doesn't get anything out of it, just putting down some vision. 957 is very safe in this scenario. Has a minion wave to leap away as well. Pepper's gonna be spotted out by the ward that was placed down by Cool, so they see him beelining towards top side of the map. Although we don't get anything from Cool's roam, that will give them the information they need to play out the early stages of this game. There he goes. He is spotted on two wards simultaneously, so uh, Pepper uh, does back off, realizing that just judging from Gimgoon's play, he should have been spotted. You can see the CS lead for 957 is actually quite massive just because of Pepper's early game counter uh, with the Zinzal versus the Talia. Alex forfeited the entire topside river, and that gave 957 a very easy lane to play with. Very quiet match to start this one between WE as well as Fun Plus Phoenix. Pepper's gonna use this time, pick up Raptor Camp, try and take that away from Alex. He is a level behind, but not by much. This Campbell should be able to give him level 5. Yeah, we have seen this scenario pop up now and then. Talia is actually pretty low win rate in terms of LPL junglers. And uh, the route that we see most junglers then go towards is trying to farm it up. You do a lot of damage in the late game, and this is a perfect setup. Oh, good dodge coming out from Pepper from Fog of War. He tries to turn back around, but doesn't realize Chris is here as well. Teleport's coming through. CA gets the jump on towards Alex, taking a lot of damage. Ben tries to jump forward, doesn't get the Winter's Bite, but it's still going through. Now on top of Cool, taking a lot of damage, forced to try to pick up a flash and go away. A few more attacks would have been enough. He gets back to safety in the trade one for one. Early Aatrox skirmishes are absolutely terrifying. I actually feel like Cool is very lucky to get away. He was not sitting on a flash, but was able to pick up a few things, I believe, in the skirmish and get himself out unscathed. If you look at the teleport situation, however, it, you do have to kind of give it to, uh, uh, to give it to FPX. They did have to teleport their top laner into this fight as well. It's funny, a Pepper chopping in a little bit too early means FPX can start the fight well. Uh, giving over the flash to Cool to pick up a little bit of a mistake there. But still one for one. W will be very happy with the trade. Their bottom lane is still going in their favor. Top lane is still in their favor as well as 957 got a kill for himself. And you have to remember that FVX selected this lane for themselves. They opted into this scenario, and those bans from W really hurting them. No Ezreal for LWX either, banned by his own team. This plant he could have gone towards. Ash was still up. Yeah. Decided to go for the Kogma. Only one game played in the LPL so far, and that was Uzi on a loss. Oh, now they're going to try and see if they can go for a dive. LWX and Chris taking a lot of damage here. LWX managed to get out. Chris jumps back in with the stopwatch. FPX trying to fight through this one. Just too many bodies from the side of WE. LWX forced to flash away as the empowered Q comes out from Mystic. Tanking way too many turret shots here. He needs to be careful. Ooh, that oh, he might die to minions. Very close. Minions are smacking him, but Ben will be able to give him the heal from Targons. We do see the teleport in as well. Quite ballsy, but his teammates are on the way. Cool. Looking for some damage here against Pepper. Trouble Bubble gonna be thrown out, but <laughs> doesn't connect. Good side set coming out from Pepper. Flick back gets it though. He jumps straight back on towards Talia. But WE gonna pay with their jungle. Can he get oh, the trade back? It's dead set. One on two. Pepper's able to take down Alex. That was such good footwork coming out from Pepper right there. The former jungler of FPX showing it up. The reaction times were absolutely on point. Dodge the Paddle Star as soon as it came out of the brush. He did not have vision of Cool's position. Was still able to react to it. Flanking out the uh, Sleepy Trouble Bubble as well. And then getting back the kill onto Alex. <laughs> that was really good to watch. But unfortunately, it was still a win for FPX. They do get the extra assist goal. Yeah, really well played. They jump out towards Pepper here. Pure reaction speed. No vision in the brush whatsoever. Pops the Crescent Guard to get more damage in. But the successful flip from Alex does finish him. A little bit greedy coming out from Alex as well. Should have just disengaged and allowed Cool to make the final few plays. Definitely agree with that. Has given WE a nice thousand gold lead 10 minutes into the match. 
Still a big pick to look out for is going to be this Aatrox by Sia. It's one we just we can't count out yet. Yep, we've seen uh, Aatrox be one of those top picks in terms of the skirmishes, very strong in the early level one. And a lot of players, I believe it was the Shy that said during Rift Rivals that, you know, some players complained that Aatrox was quite weak later into the game. He said that doesn't really matter because you have a free Guardian's Angel and you can build one on top of yourself. You're essentially tanking with those stasis effects. How often do you even get to super late the match anyway with the current meta? Very rarely happens. It has. Uh, we saw RNG do it against Vici of all teams. Oh boy. Best team in the world against the worst <laughs> team in the LPL. Two back to back 60 minute matches. They did play very well that series after Saber Vici. And uh, I know Frost had a probably rough day. Probably wasn't expecting to go home close to 12. I don't think anyone was. Uh, coming back into this game though, bottom lane is still heavily in favor of WE, 20 CS up. Mid lane Cool has a 2 kill lead over CS Aatrox. They do have some windows of opportunities for FPX, they do have the Talia wall, also the Cannon Barrage coming in from the top side. But they're fallen so far behind and the vision is so far in WE's court that FPX has never been able to really pull the trigger. We talked about it in the champion select that they still do want to focus on the bot lane. That's why they got the Alistar out. That's why they got the Talia. But unfortunately, as the draft evolved, their windows surely uh, shrunk to only the post six. And they're effectively losing most of their lanes right now across the board from FPX. The only shining spot is cool with the two early kills. It's not costing them much there. A thousand gold is the difference between the two teams. Alex is not having a good game on this Talia though. Really not much you can do against the Xin Zhao. Especially when uh, his lanes are ahead as well. You can't really go into river at that point. He's just gonna have to farm it up, which is, luckily for him, something that Talia does incredibly well. I'm also very curious to see how FPX navigate around this Aatrox, because it's just a pick you don't give over at the moment. So Blade of the Ruin King Rush is the first item that LWX will pick up. Varus already completed his, not going towards the lethality, going towards the attack hits instead. Like we said, WE's late game teamfight style, what they're still banking on. Pepper was spotted here. Chris gonna try and knock Mystic back to deny this dive a little bit longer, gives LWX some time to clear out these waves. Uh, ultimate being thrown out by Alex, trying to separate Pepper. That's actually great for uh, WE. Good night. Does have the world's ender to keep alive oh. and they're gonna take the kill. Pepper jumping back into the mid lane. Very nicely done by Cool, but you're right, CS survives through it thanks to you know, the revive that Aatrox gets. Yep. It's a very long cooldown in this current patch, but uh, no, it comes in very handy. Do keep yourself alive for a very long time. Yep, but with Pepper close by means Cool is going to fall in the mid lane. No shutdown, he was only on two kills there, but they'll be pretty happy with the two kills being picked up. And there's just so little pressure coming out from FPX. Their mid lane is down, this they the... use their Talia wall already, they don't have the tools to even push back at this exactly. point. This is the opposite of the playstyle we expected from them. Yep. <sighs> Where's the fast pace FPX that we are used to? Nowhere to be seen at the moment, and very frustrating to watch almost. I really question the Kogma pick. Like you said, I believe the Ash would have been a much better answer. They relegated themselves to a slow start. Let's watch this duel between Shia and Cool. Does dodge out on the uh, the redemption and then goes back on Cool. Pops a world enders early so he won't fall down. Those last a very long time, and you do put yourself in a three point, almost four second stasis. Pepper comes in clean to finish off the kill. That was one of the shiny lights for FPX there. Cool picking up the Zoe. Got a lead in the mid lane. Even that's being crushed now. First turret fell to Mystic as well. He's rotated towards the top side of the map. They have a gag set up to use against Varus. Is he gonna walk in? Not yet, but Cool's gonna be the first target here. Running away with Ghost that he picked up from a minion just casually. Oh, poor Mystic. 
Uh, bye bye. There they go. Chris jumps in with a headbutt flash. Mystic tries to lock him down, but there's too much being thrown his way. FPX get the kill in the top lane. Yeah, and there's nothing W can really do about it. Uh, cool managed to avoid the three man gank incoming, so he will be able to defend his tower. Nothing being traded back by WE. But just a kill. That's all FPX are able to get from that. Cool's able to escape through the mid lane as well. I think the real winner here is going to be LWX. He's been sitting pretty in the bottom lane, <laughs> farming for quite some time. He has a wave frozen for himself. Exactly. And uh, 957 really isn't the sort to push in very hard. With most of his teammates on the top side, he actually didn't really punish LWX at all. What I feel like W could be looking to do is really try to push the tempo forward a little bit. They have a very strong composition at this point in time, but that not, might not be the case going forward when Talia and Kogma are able to farm up. So I believe they should be looking for those uh, jungle control to happen on the red side. They have some control over the red side jungle. In fact, they think they have enough to allow Pepper to start to Rift Herald. Uh, we'll get some assistance from Ben, but doesn't seem like FPX want to fight for this just yet. Chris stepping up aggressively. Talia builds a wall and they're looking to lock down Mystic, it seems. Uh, but that's just strange play coming out from FPX all round. I think Alex is having a horrible match so far. Yeah, he's not really Ooh. affecting anything. Double, Double connected. They put Pepper to sleep. Don't get the damage on the follow-up, though. Chris now taking way too much. Knife by someone with a good flank. Watching Sia, though, trying to jump on top of Alex. First person to fall is going to be LWX. Then Chris shortly after. Three kills picked up by WE. They opened the game wide open with a 4,000 gold lead. Yeah, that was uh, definitely an LWX sort of teleport right there. Goes straight in and dies within the three man. Very good save by Ben, I have to say. It's uh, Braum has been his signature pick and he did block out all the damage after Pepper did fall asleep from the Sleepy Trouble Bowl. Gonna be able to pick up mid lane out of turret as well. Increase their gold lead to 5,000 up over FPX. Make that even more as Mystic takes down top lane turret too. Now, where was this team WE all split? <laughs> where was this Varus pick for Mystic? Like, he's been holding onto it for so long. Everybody knows it's his major weakness in terms of the champion pool. Look at this save coming in from Ben. Stops the entire follow up and, um, excuse me, LWX was trying to walk for the that Herald. Is... It looked a lot like a teleport because of the glowing purple light, but uh, that was very ambitious and you can't pick that up. That's just incredibly <laughs> poor positioning coming yeah. out from LWX. Ah. FPX as well, picking the fights. Uh, that was an atrocious fight. Alex used the ultimate to try and start the fight initially and separated his team from the engage. I really don't understand why LWX was trying to body block the Herald. Like, you can't do anything about don't it. I think that was intention. I think it's just trying <laughs> to kite into the fight itself. With still very awkward positioning right next to Braum and Zin Zhao. Uh. Here's the shotgun. The situation not working out. He's playing Cogmo in this match, something we've already seen from Uzi last week. We're not impressed by this champion at the moment. No, not at all. And I feel like Alex is uh, using his walls quite haphazardly. Hasn't really influenced any of the lanes. What he should have done was try to sync up with Cannon Barrage level 6, punish the bot lane. You know Mystic's going to be pushed up very far. That didn't happen. The mid lane collapsed as well. And they looked for a fight where I felt like W's composition was just flat out stronger than them. Nope. And FPX just all around not having a good game. Uh, they drafted into losing lanes. Not doing well topside. They gave away Aatrox. And then they have a bottom lane that is lost from level 1. Uh, FPX just seem all out of sorts at the moment. And to top it all off, multiple players having very poor performances in game 1. Now let's see if they can turn things around. They do have some scaling in their lineup to go into the late game. Especially with the pick potential of Zoe available. Anything can happen for FPX. To look down the map, I feel like Gimgoon at least still has a decent matchup against Nar. We're not really seeing 957 try to push him out of lane, which is something that can happen if the Nar actually gets ahead. Usually if uh, both champions are on even items, that's pretty bad news for the game plank. You're really looking for the Triforce spike before uh, against the unfinished Black Cleaver to win out that matchup. But since that has been long gone and passed. No, he already has the Black Cleaver. Yep. Uh, looking towards his Blaze Ruin King next as well. 
He's farming up decently, but they'll be collapsed upon by Pepper as well as 9 by 7 Ultimate gets thrown out, trying to slow them. He'll flash away. Pepper follows through. Just even more from WE. Thrown at FPX. And really no answer in sight coming out from FPX. <laughs> It just they've, looks like a just roll out game they've, for they've them. Just give, it almost feels like they've given up. No, that's not the case, but the composition they've drafted can't do anything. Yeah, they started out so good. Dodges out the Infernal Train for cool right there. Is able to escape. They started out with the right idea. It was a really good start. I feel like the Alistar to Leah, very strong into lane. But I believe FPX was shocked to see the Varus coming out from Mystic. That's not a champion he has chosen to play when even a lot of things were riding on the pick. And that surprise really led FPX to kind of panic and then go into the inferior match of, of Kog'Maw. But you don't even have to go to Kog'Maw. There are so many other picks that you could pick up in the AD carry position at the moment. We've seen Graves <laughs> being picked up more than Kog'Maw in the bottom lane. I don't think they expected Varus. They just lost their minds after that. But again, that's just silly. I know that Mystic's not known for the champion, but that is a currently Heavily banned champion on blue side. FPX should have expected something. It's just inexcusable at the moment. Uh, they need to clean things up in this match and the rest of the series. Whereas WE, we, we have to talk about them playing well so far. 9 for 7 on a signature pick. He's having a good game. Pepper is taking it to his former team. Now jumping straight back on top of Chris. Alex going to flick him over the wall and they jump over as well with the rest of his team. But Aatrox jumps back in. Chris going to be taken down. WE with another pick. Yeah, just so strong in the early skirmishes. Four knockups right there in that combination. Actually, five, considering Ben's knockup as well. Alistar, even with the ultimate, unable to pop out of this situation. And I just feel like this is what W should continue to do. If they are anywhere put into a bad situation, I feel like Pepper could just proc uh, Crescent Guard. And he's pretty much immune from the majority of damage coming out from, uh, from FPX. The Cannon Barrage won't even damage Pepper when he has the R up. So they can use that point and really force themselves in to FBX's jungle. They'll try to. Let's see if that's gonna be enough for them. We're, we're just at a stage in the match where WE have acquired such a large lead that all FBX can really do is sit back and try to scale back up. So the ball is in WE's court. This is really strange because that's the complete opposite of how FPX has been playing recently. 9 for 7 making a small mistake there, and Cool's actually rotating into this fight as well. Flashing away from the barrels, looking for the 1-on-1. One -one. Good damage going through, a few more attacks gonna be enough. Cool now joins it, Knight by 7 though, doesn't commit to the fight. However, the rest of W gonna capitalize on that. Chris getting locked down first, they get another pick for themselves, training 1-for-1 one -one across the map. You could tell that 957 wanted to trade back. He already saw the Zoe coming in, but he realized that he couldn't really escape the situation. Fought for the best of it. Unfortunately, uh, was a little bit short. About 200 damage short on finishing off Kim Goon. Looking overall, though, W has a very strong Baron team. Double Blade of the Ruined Kings. So, if they could potentially get a pick or force the TP out from Kim Goon, they have a very easy rotation straight into the Baron. They actually have to try and find a way to do just that, and they have to start worrying about Gim Goon a little bit. 5,000 gold is what separates the team, but Gim Goon with the Yom as well as Triforce complete. Gangplank will start to scale up, and I mean, Kog'Maw is going to scale up as well later into the match. Cool's not having a bad day either. 3-1-0. Here's the shining beacon of hope on the FPX roster. So FPX do have the late game. How are they going to defend their red? Not well is the answer. Face checking and lockdown. Good red buff control coming out from Team WE, making sure they take it away from FPX. Also crucial for them if they want to move towards the Baron buff later in the match. Chris has been the main target from one of the players at the Rift now, 0-5 and 2. It's probably not worth much at this point. It's a pretty cheap stake at the moment, but he has to do it. He keeps getting picked off. Uh, cute play oh, from wow. Ben there, throws out the door to stop Talia's ultimate. Means that FPX don't get to check if Baron has been started. Ben will be put to sleep. The call cool doesn't follow up with any damage. The rest of the team is going to collapse. LWX walking over a couple of wards, now spotting out the Baron buff with his ultimate. Throws out another one, doesn't get it. Smited away by Sinjao. WE secure the objective. 
bit of a close call from LWX. Did pop the Arcano Barrage, trying to snipe it out, but wasn't going to happen. That was a really good turn from WE. They checked none of FPX's trinkets were up. They probably scanned a couple of them. And uh, Gimgun was pushed very far into his bottom second tower as well. So very good timing on that play coming out from WE. The early block from Ben also denying vision coming out from uh, coming out from Alex. But again, poor from FPX. If Alex's ultimate's getting stopped and you don't get vision, then you've got to start suspecting something was up. Baron wasn't even started at that point. F uh, WE are maintaining good control around the objective, so they're keeping firm pressure on the match. They're not sitting back or letting up in any way. Quintus Rage plays Bowl as Blade of the Ruined King have been complete for Varus. So Witsend's going to be next. Pure on hit attack speed bill. Zeke's Arbitrary can be picked up by Alistar for the... Sorry, by Ben for the extra damage on Mystic. Yeah, if he can flash in and get the uh, convergence going, will be a lot of damage and extra slow as well. You but can it's see really collapsing for uh, FBX. Yeah, the push, one three one's going fine. Pushing on a few different fronts. One three one at the moment. Pepper Ben as well as Mystic staying safe in the mid lane, letting Sia push on the top side of the map, and nine five seven in the bottom lane. One final inner turret is all that remains outside of FBX's base. Good flick back, but Sia just charges away. Does look like FPX are going to lose the majority of their outer towers, and W really are getting to the point where they could start diving. The Sterix is done. I feel like Guardian Angels will be next for Shie, and that will be the big point where they can just brute force their way into the high ground. It's essentially three lives on that Aatrox at that point. He's right now just sticking around the turret, making sure that the Baron buff Dominions will collapse and get some chip damage going. Chris being jumped on again. WE now focusing on the mid lane. Mystic getting plenty of auto attacks down. That turret is going to be taken down. A couple more is all it's going to take. Cannon Minion gets it. First base tower can be broken against FPX. WE with a very strong start to the first match of this best three, making all the right moves and all the right plays. Pepper, a little bit of a sticky situation, forced to flash over the wall. Second inhibitor turret is going to fall this time in the bottom lane. It looks like W are aiming for all three at the same time. FBX have to start a fight. Jumping in though, Pepper! Gonna jump in for the fight. Chris can be taken down next as well. Ben and 957 dealing the back lines, and it's just fight split up across the map, which WE win no matter where they go. Taking down the next two inhibitors, moving towards the Nexus turret. And even though they might be out of playoff contention, they put on a show in the first match of this best three, besting FBX and actually taking this game to match point. You have to ask. Where was this WE all split? Where was this where was this Varus from Mystic? Where was Pepper on the lineup? WE not looking like a team that has already been eliminated from playoffs. In fact, they only have three series win this split so far. It's just the first match, but it was a very strong start for Team WE. They played it well. We also have to address FPX dropping the ball in so many different ways. From giving over Aatrox as the first pick for WE to picking up losing lanes bottom side, top side of the map. I think clearly that we see Alex needs a winning matchup to assert his influence on the map. I felt like Alex really stayed on his own side of the map, didn't really influence any of the lanes. They didn't get their big level 6 window in and the game just felt like there was no resistance coming out from FBX. The, uh, the final push from WE was especially disappointing because FBX at that point, they had to go in on one side. They yes. had to all in on the three man, but they just never had the cohesion to do it. At the end of the day, it was a 15,000 gold lead for Team WE. Said that they're a team that likes to take it to the late game. They didn't even have to in this match against FBX because the early game was where it was decided. We'll start with the draft here. Because we saw plenty of AD carry bans coming out from Team WE. That by no means meant that there were no AD carries to pick from. The likes of Ash were still available, which are very popular in the bottom lane as a pick of choice, but they went towards Cogmaw. And even on top of that, they gave over Aatrox as one of the most contested picks on the current patch straight away. Just give it over to WE. They and were the responses, about Alistar and Talia. Yeah. And uh, that's just. Uh... 
That's that's just a tragedy in terms of drafting from FVX. I feel like they showed their hands, and W had very good answers. The Zinzao pick was especially crucial to this matchup, I felt like, because it gave them winning opportunities in bot and mid, and they just snowballed incredibly hard yeah. off of it. And she has been proven that, hey, I can play the Aatrox too. Stop thinking about picking on 957. Pretty much. I mean, 957 got his signature pick of, nah. He's been playing it all season, like the entire summer split. He said, I can still play... Uh, now, nah, whenever I feel like I can play now nah in the top lane whenever the team needs me to. And recently, it's becoming a very strong meta pick, especially going towards the more damage focused routes as of late. And took it to them in the top lane. And we thought that FPX could continue their aggressive playstyle. I mean, the picks aside, which kind of don't allow them to play the aggressive playstyle, because you've got a scaling gangplank, you've got a scaling Cogmore, um, and then you're up against a Sin Jiao who's going to control that mid lane and jungle. They weren't aggressive. FPX went completely away from the playstyle that's been working for them for the past few weeks. Yeah, and the bottom line is, I don't think FBX is good enough of a team where they can come back from large early game deficits and bank on their AD carry to carry them through the late game. That has not been a successful strategy for them at all, and if you look at Cool's champion pool throughout this split, he has been mainly focusing on early tempo, getting the Zoe, getting the Talon down. And if that doesn't exist for him, you can see FBX just kind of falls apart. And Cool still played okay. He was playing Zoe in the mid lane, he was doing his job, but everything else was just falling apart around him and WE were punishing FPX for all of that. So it didn't look too good for him. Um, but still, moving away from that aggression, that's just really weird. <laughs> it is super weird, but on the same time, I want to say congratulations to WE because it's a very rare scenario where we can un ubiquitously say that they definitely won the draft. Yes, I mean, like the draft looks so good on their side, and it doesn't usually happen for them. The biggest criticism Froskern and I have for WE is their drafting phase, the tendency to put themselves on the back foot and wait for that super late game as their only out. But, but they really changed. Happen. Yeah, yeah. this time WE did not only draft well, but they execute on their draft fantastically as well. There was no early game coming out from FPX, and Team WE took it to them. With that, WE, they're now going to be at match point against FPX. We're going to go into a quick break. Back with Game 2 in just a bit. Oh, 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 oh,